Well, good morning. My name is Martin Tyner and with the Southwest Wildlife Foundation, and this is Scout, our golden eagle. And Scout is uh, one of our wildlife ambassadors and one of my falconry birds. And so I've been asked to, a lot of questions about the birds. And, and so we're going to just uh, spend a few minutes and answer everybody's questions about, about the animals and kind of where they came from and how we got them and all of those kinds of things. Hatch date. It would have been sometime, it would have been uh, fe February uh, 2003. Now, Scout is from the wild, so we don't have an exact hatch date, so it would probably have been the end of February about 2003. Thank you for keeping on the plastic, sir. License date. Uh, Scout became a member of our organization on April 13th, 2006. Uh, his common name is uh, Golden Eagle, and the way they get the name Golden Eagle from, because you see it's a big brown bird, but he actually gets it from the from the color on the back of his head. And you can see a great picture there of the back of his head, these beautiful golden colored feathers. Where the bald eagle has the white head, the golden eagle has the golden colored feathers on the back of its head. So that's where he gets the name Golden from. His scientific name is uh, Aquila, which, which is uh, ba basically uh, the, the golden eagle. And uh, the golden eagle is the world eagle. Where the bald eagle is exclusively a North American eagle, uh, the golden eagle is found worldwide, uh, not in Antarctica, but almost everywhere else. And, and we have golden eagle and golden eagle subspecies. So we have subspecies in Africa and Australia and through Europe and Asia um, and and down into South America. So this is truly uh, the international uh, world eagle. And the larger group for all of these birds are, are called raptors. Um, you know, they, they are the descendants of the avian dinosaurs. And so if you ever uh, want to see a dinosaur, there, there he is. You know, it's just a modern version. Wait, he's a very large male. Uh, the average uh, male golden eagle uh, starts off at about five pounds and will go up to about nine pounds. And a female golden eagle will start at about nine pounds and go up to about 13, 14 pounds in weight. And so this is a male and he's an eight pound. So he's on the large size uh, of a male golden eagle. His wingspan's a good six feet. I can try to hold him back and we'll let you see what the, the beautiful wings look like. Ah, that's my baby. Huh, you're a good boy. Diet, uh, primarily um, mammals. Uh, they will eat some larger birds. Uh, but primarily mammals and and some reptiles as well in the wild. Now, now Scout um, eats primarily rats, mice, quail, pigeons, and, and rabbits. Uh, so we, we try to match his diet as close to a natural diet as we possibly can. Activities. Well, Scout is one of our wildlife ambassadors. Uh, he and I travel throughout the Western United States uh, doing school programs and scout programs and Eagle Courts of Honors and community events, educating people about, about eagles and, uh, and how beneficial they are within the ecosystem. But he's also not only a wildlife ambassador, he is one of my falconry birds. And so during the hunting season, which is September through February, 
he and I go out and uh, he flies free. He goes thousands of feet in the sky, flies with the wild eagles, and he follows me as I flush out jackrabbits for him to catch. So he gets to fly like an eagle and hunt like an eagle and still have available for our wildlife programs. And so he, he has a pretty busy life. You know, he, he does love to go uh, out and do our, our hunting together. He, he loves to soar. But, uh, you know, he's a bit unique in that he really seems to enjoy uh, doing our educational programs. Uh, he's, he's, he and I have been doing this for a very long time, and he's actually the star of the show, and I think he knows that. And, and so he, uh, whenever we're doing a, a program together, he likes to uh, tease me. You know, they're so intelligent. Uh, but for, he'll reach up and he'll steal my glasses and throw them out into the audience. Uh, he'll he'll take a button and rip it off my shirt and, and spit it out on the floor. You know, he likes he likes to tease, and, and he just thinks that's that's very very funny. And in fact, when we're doing these. Uh, these videos and we have no audience he behaves himself pretty well because he doesn't see anybody to show off for but uh when he's in a crowd he does get pretty silly don't you yes you do are my feathers crooked are they You know, a temperament, um, a golden eagle, if handled appropriately, uh, is by far the most intelligent, uh, the most personable, the most patient, the most wonderful raptor to handle on the planet. If um, handled inappropriate, this is an eight pound animal that will put you in the hospital on a regular basis. Uh, because of their, of their tremendous intelligence, uh, you never ever want to offend your eagle. They, they, they will never forgive and they will never forget. And, and they have the tools, you know, you can see right here, look at those feet. You know, there's 600 pounds per square inch of crushing power of those feet. Uh, and talons, you know, uh, four inches plus long, uh, those talons are strong enough to literally crush the small bones in my hand. And so they can be dangerous to work with. Um, but like, like I said, if you handle them appropriately, uh, they're, they're just a sheer joy. And, and, and Scout here, um, fortunately, we've uh, handled him appropriately. And, and he is a very, very dear friend. You know, every morning he, he lives out of his chamber outside. And every morning, uh, as soon as I get up, I hear him calling for me. And I have to walk up to his chamber and talk to him and give him a big hug and tell him he's a good boy. And, and uh, before I start my day get, and before I start feeding and watering everybody, he, he needs his recognition that, uh, that we're buddies. So yes, the personality is truly remarkable when you're working with an eagle, especially if you've done, handled them appropriately. Story of arrival. Okay. Um, there's a bit of a sad story and a, and a, and a happy story. Uh, my previous eagle, and if you look at the, the, the painting behind me, that's me with my previous eagle named Bud. And Bud and I were together for 16 years. He was bitten by a mosquito and died of West Nile virus. And after Bud passed away, you know, it was incredibly heartbreaking. He was a very, very dear friend. And, and he was my falconry bird, my wildlife ambassador. After we lost Bud, um, I got a phone call from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service that uh, there was a... Uh, a farmer up in Wyoming that was having problems with, with an eagle and he thought the eagle was killing his, his livestock. And to be honest with you, that's really not true. Um, you know, an eagle is capable of carrying one third of his body weight into flight, so he's not gonna fly off with cows or sheep or goats or anything else. Um, but 
they're they're primarily a scavenger, and so the farmer drives up and sees an eagle eating on a dead sheep or a dead lamb. The, the the farmer thinks the eagle killed it. With the eagle's just a scavenger, he's just cleaning it up. Anyway, the farmer wanted the eagle gone, and so the Fish and Wildlife Service called me and says, "We've got this eagle depredation situation. Uh, can you get up to Wyoming and rescue that eagle?" And, and so I basically. Uh, I grabbed my wife and we ran to Wyoming and uh, we trapped Scout to get him out of the situation. Now, the agreement is that he never returns to Wyoming. Uh, and so in most situations like that, the eagle ends up in a zoo in a cage for the rest of its life. Because if you release them, they migrate right back to where they learn to fly. He'd go right back to Wyoming. And so, but with what I do, he gets to be a falconry bird and gets to fly free to hunt. And so we went to Wyoming. It took me about a week to trap him. And, uh, and again, as soon, as soon as we caught him, we got him re- released from the, from the trap and got him uh, in, in his transport box and uh, headed for Utah. And we got him home here. And as we got him home, you know, and we, you know, made sure he was medically fine and, and those kinds of things. And now it's time to, uh, have a have a falconer's wake now a wake is is a very uh traditional way to uh convince uh, a wild animal like this that i'm a nice guy and what a wake is is basically uh i went downstairs my basement where it's dark and it's cool and it's quiet and we turned had a little tiny television we turned on down there and i sat down there with my eagle for three days and three nights. And for those three days and three nights, we sat, we just sat quietly. I had food for him. And he finally settled, settled down. And just, just like this, and when he started to eat, um, we noticed, you know, that's that's when I he's overcome a great deal of his fear of me. And now it's time to put him out in his chamber. And so that 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 wake kind of bonds the falconer and the bird together and, and so that that was our our first introduction together uh treats his favorite thing is is uh jackrabbit uh but he likes like i said uh, quail and pigeons and rats and mice and all of that kind of stuff too so you know, it, it's, as long as it's a natural diet, um, something very similar to what they eat in the wild, they're quite happy. When he is out hunting, um, his motivation is food. And so when, when he's out hunting, if I want him to call him back to me, I always have uh, food in basically bite-sized portions. Um, for him, bite-sized portions is, is, is a mouse. You know, for, for a hawk and falcon, a bite-sized portion is what we call a tidbit. And so we'll always bring, you know, food for him. And, and so he knows that if he flies back, lands on my glove, he's going to get fed. And so that's that really is the, the reason he comes back. Not because he likes me, even though he, he truly does. Uh, that's not why he comes back. He comes back because he exploits me. I make his life easier. Uh, and, and he knows that if he doesn't catch a rabbit, he's going to get fed anyway. Life expectancy with an eagle is uh, remarkably long. In the wild, uh, about uh, 20 years would be considered an average life expectancy for a golden eagle in the wild. In captivity, we can double that. We can go more than 40 years if all goes well in captivity. Uh, And so if all goes well with Scout here, um, you know, know, I, I will be in my 90s and still trying to work with an eagle.